we are starting a new chapter now that is photosynthesis and here we will be discussing some historical background some scientists and their contribution by which or because of those experiments we now know the exact process of photosynthesis now before we actually take up all these uh, scientists and their contribution what exactly we are we will be discussing in this chapter is the complete process of photosynthesis all those things which are required that is raw material we will be talking about the pigments which are essential that is chlorophyll all types of chlorophyll and other other accessory pigments we will also discuss the type of light which is required that is the quality that we are talking of or the wavelength we can say then we will also discuss the two parts that is light and dark reaction we will also talk about certain adaptations which are seen in other plants which undergo a different kind of reaction which we call photorespiration so uh, we will discuss all these uh, points or uh, subtopics under this chapter so let us start with uh, the historical background now these are certain scientists and their contribution has played a very significant role in understanding how this process exactly takes place we will start with the first one that is helmont so when helmont was the first one who actually gave us a little idea though this idea was uh, discarded later on but what he said was that food which is synthesized by the plants comes from water and not from soil now why this statement was given by him was based on a simple experiment what he did was he took a potted plant he took weight of the plant separately and the soil which was put in that pot separately so there was x a mass of the plant and a y mass of the soil and he grew that plant in that pot he just watered the plant he did not add anything else after a few years he measured the mass of the plant and it was found out to be many folds more than the initial weight of that plant because the plant had grown and there was negligible loss in the weight of the soil just to understand suppose we say that initially the plant weighed say 10 grams and the soil weighed say around 100 grams we are just taking this for our understanding after few years he found that this became like 100 kg and the soil became only 99 g so if the growth of the plant was actually due to what was coming from the soil if it was true then this number should have gone down by 100 because here the increase is from 10 g to 100 kg so from where was this mass accumulating in the plant if it was from the soil the soil's weight should have reduced in the same proportion but he did not see that and that's why he said that the weight or the mass of the plant which was increasing is not because of the soil it is from water because he was adding only water from outside so his statement is based on this simple principle or simple experiment which he performed the second one is the contribution of joseph presley his uh, statement or uh, the conclusion which he gave says that the air or oh sorry the plant restores to the air whatever breathing animals and burning candle has removed and this statement was based on his experiment of bell jar what he did was he took a potted plant and kept one burning candle along with it and inverted a bell jar over it now when these two were kept together the candle kept burning and the plant was also healthy when he kept both the things separately plant separately without candle in it and uh the candle separately without plant in it after few days he found that the plant's growth was arrested it start drying up and died and when cat burning candle was kept under that inverted bell jar he found that the flame extinguished after some time 
So he concluded, and similar experiment was done with the mouse and uh, in the bell jar. After some time, he found out that the mouse also died. And when plant and candle were kept together or plant and mouse, they were kept together, he found that both survived for a longer period of time. So his conclusion was that this burning candle removes something from the air. Breathing animal also takes something from the air which is restored by the plant. And that is why when these two things, that is plant and animal or plant and the burning candle, when they were kept together, the plant was able to restore in the air whatever either burning candle or the mouse removed. Now, after understanding the complete process, we know that plants are emitting or releasing oxygen which is required for the burning candle as well as for the breathing animals. At that time, the picture or this complete uh, process was not that clear. So that is why his statement was little, uh, you know, uh, simple. Then next uh, contribution is of Jan Engenhaus. He said that sunlight is essential for photosynthesis and he performed experiments using some aquatic plants and he observed that when aquatic plants were kept in water in daytime, that is during light, there were bubbles which were given out. Later on, it was found out that these bubbles were of oxygen. That means some process was taking place resulting into formation of a gas which was released in the form of bubbles. Later on, we found out that it was oxygen. And now if we correlate this, this is what is exactly happening in photosynthesis. Plants take carbon dioxide, synthesize carbohydrates and oxygen is given out as a byproduct. So these bubbles were the ones which they were or he was referring to. Next experiment was by Sachs and he said that plants produce glucose or carbohydrate during photosynthesis. Then was Engelmann's experiment. This experiment was again based or was performed using a green alga that is cladophora. And he found in his experiment that the green alga accumulated in two zones of the uh, visible spectrum. So what was done by uh, Engelman was white light was passed through a prism and the Vibgior, the complete spectrum which was uh, obtained, it was exposed. The cladophora was exposed to that wavelength. So the experiment was something like this. This was aquatic media. The cladophora, the green alga was in the water and these were the wavelengths which were uh, ex uh, the cladophora was exposed to and he found out that cladophora accumulated or collected in two regions. One was in the blue region where the blue wavelength was and the other one was in the red region. So their collection in specific wavelengths represented that this is the wavelength where the plants are able to absorb maximum light and they are able to perform maximum process and that process is photosynthesis. Now we know that these are the two wavelengths where maximum absorption takes place. Next experiment was of Van Neel. He performed the experiment using purple and green bacteria. And his conclusion was that photosynthesis is a light dependent reaction. It takes place in presence of light. After studying the entire process, we now know that there are two parts. One is light dependent and the other is light independent, which we call as light reactions and dark reactions. One more observation which he made was that hydrogen comes from a suitable oxidizable compound and this hydrogen is used to reduce carbon dioxide. We now know that this hydrogen comes from water. This hydrogen is used to make a reducing power 
and then in the next phase that is in the dark reaction that reducing agent is used to convert carbon dioxide into carbohydrates or to reduce this carbon dioxide. Next uh, contribution was of Robert Hill. He said that plants use light energy to generate reducing power. This was extension of what was given by Van Neen. Theodore say, uh, says or uh, concluded from his experiment that water is essential for photosynthesis. Emerson, another scientist, his contribution were again multiple. One, he said or he uh, proved that in plants there are two photosystems which exist. We will be discussing about these two photosystems a little later and they are called PS1 and PS2, photosystems 1 and 2. He also showed an effect which, he, which was called immersion's effect or red drop. We will discuss this also in detail later on. And he also said that the complete process of photosynthesis is completed in two parts. One is light reaction and the other is dark reaction. So multiple contributions, multiple uh, uh, results or experiments were done by Merson and we have many things which we will be discussing in detail. And then on our list, the last one is Melvin Kelvin who gave the complete process of dark reaction which is known as C3 cycle or Kelvin cycle or simply dark reaction. This also we will be discussing in detail. If we read any uh, reference book, we find around 40-50 uh, different scientists and their contributions. We have picked the most important ones whose experiments were pretty much conclusive that this is what the process takes place and that is why we have selected the most important ones. And now let us uh, talk about the process of photosynthesis. We will start with the pigments which are essential.